he used social media and saved mid five figure um, advertising budgets. They used social media and they piggybacked off of multiple channels and platforms in order to really connect and communicate with their audience. Now, I know one of the speakers yesterday said that, and I think it, it was the one about uh, from the Tremor Agency, but you know, you need to be connected, you need to hear a brand, you need to see a brand in six different channels and, and destinations, and Mint really did that. Because you heard it through word of mouth, you saw it online, you saw it on Twitter, you saw it on the iPhone, you saw it on, on multiple different destinations. And they created a huge Facebook community, a huge Twitter community, and they built a blog that even to today is a very well-trafficked blog for an online sexual destination for money news, money management news. Squarespace is a really good example of a giveaway. So it's one specific giveaway that just generated so much buzz. Um, they went from 750 to 36,000 followers with 30 iPhone gift certificates. Now this was a little controversial because when they were giving away these gift certificates, they were saying, we're giving away an iPhone. And this is when the iPhone was you know, still you know, a hot commodity. People were just standing in line for them. And um, what people didn't realize was it wasn't an iPhone for like $500 or $600. It was a gift certificate for the $199 you know, iPhone. And um, so that you know, spread up a little controversy. I think people overall got over it. Um, but that hashtag Squarespace was used over 95,000 times in the span of 30 days. And if you were to look at, you know, adding up the 200, you know, 200, um, uh, the $200 each giveaway for 30, day, 30 days, you would see that each follower basically amounted to 17 cents per follower. All right, so there was an interesting debate about who owns social media, and I don't think that that question will ever get solved. But I wanted to approach it from a startup perspective. Um, when you're at a startup, especially a very, very small startup, when there's only a handful of people, there's usually not ever a dedicated resource to marketing, not actually, you know, in, in the early days. And if there is, the startup is lucky to have an intern. And so what happens is, when you do have someone nowadays that's focused on social media, someone that usually gets it, or is really, 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 really wanting to understand it, you know, is, is researching, is learning, is, is checking out what the competitors are doing. Um, and what I've seen is it usually, you know, if it is someone that isn't a function, it's, it's usually marketing. However, that person, whoever that person is, has to, by necessity, communicate with every other person at the startup. What are you working on? What are you doing? What's a product, product roadmap? What's the next step? You know, trying to pull as much information as possible. Not that I'm saying that these other people are like jumping up in joy to get that information, but as a product of necessity, not for just social media, but for marketing, for whatever functions, they need to get this information. And because of that, there's actually this unified voice. There's this one person that's focused on this effort. When you're at a big company, there's a fight. There's always a fight. Who owns social media? Where is it going to live? Where is it going to come from? What, who's going to do it correctly? Oh, I have a different perspective. I feel like it gets harder now just because social media, you know, there's so much information out there and there's so many different perspectives, so you really could pick up any kind of theories and models and, and run with it. Whereas when I was starting in 2007, there wasn't anything. And so basically, it was kind of up to me to figure out what that was. But over the course of three, four years, doing social media at some microsystems, I realized a few things. Social media cannot be done by one person at a big company, but it does have to be a unified voice. It has to be a collaboration of many different voices under one umbrella. And what I wanted to do is share a couple examples of how you can achieve that, in case you wanted to get an example from a startup or an example from a big company. From the startup perspective, I work with a, a mobile analytics uh, an advertising platform company, and um, they set up an editorial calendar. So basically, they said, you know what, these are the days that we're going to be blogging, these are the, the product roadmaps that we have, this is the, the information we're going to be putting out on a newsletter, and guess what? The marketing person isn't the only person that can blog, we're going to kind of divvy it up, so the engineer, the developer, one of the founders, and the marketing person are going to switch off every week to make sure that there's rich content. Um, in addition to that, the startup actually has a social media alias. It's social media at their company name dot com. And anytime there's a TechCrunch article, a Mashable article, um, any kind of relevant news that's relevant to their startup as it relates to marketing, you know, the marketing people, like I started kind of sharing on that alias, 
and the, the marketing interns started sharing them, the alias of founders started kind of joining in, and now it became a very participatory thing where everyone on the team was more engaged in understanding why social media mattered to their company. Similarly, at Sun, we had something called the Forum. And the Forum was interesting because what it was was a collaboration of stakeholders at Sun that all were on the same email alias, so it was the Forum at Sun.com, and essentially, um, we got together once a month, we got on a phone call, and we said, this is what we're doing in social media for our department, our division. What are you up to? And it wasn't a matter of, oh, I think you're wrong, or this doesn't sound right. It was a matter of, how can I help you? What do you need? We have these channels. What's our messaging? How can we be of support? How can we leverage those tools to make and communicate our message more? So it really became an amazing, amazing <coughs> collaborative experience for us to have this central destination. All right, so number two, having a community from within. I mentioned that not everyone loves social media, and we all know this. We're all getting pushed back on some level in our companies, startups, whatever. Um, the startup mentality sees it as, you know what, other startups are doing this. We have to do this. We have to do this now. But um, it's a combination of researching it and figuring out what their competitors and other startups are doing, and it's about sharing with their team, and it's about living and breathing social media. Um, and that's how startups really approach it because this is their marketing function. They don't have advertising. They don't have, you know, PR sometimes. They don't have all these other functions that a bigger company may have. The big company mentality is very, very, very clear that not everyone understands it. You can't force it. That's the first thing that I realized at Sun. Day one. I went to someone in my PR group and said, okay, social media, let's do this. Do you have some news that we can then work with and figure out how we want to communicate this? And she looked at me like, I don't have time for this. This is not something I'm interested in. And I realized very quickly that I couldn't just go to everyone and get everyone as excited as I was about social media. I needed to show them the real value of what social media was going to be for their business. So on day one, I started a group on Facebook called Sun Facebook Fridays. And basically, the group description said something like, You'll get a quick bite of information on Facebook if you join this group. You'll become a mini social media expert. You don't have to read this during work, but you're encouraged to if you want to. It'll only take about five minutes of your time, and I guarantee that you'll enjoy it. That was the message. I expected maybe a couple hundred people to join, and if that, I would have been happy because I wanted them to really kind of be social media evangelists at Sun. That group quickly turned into 2,000. Um, people slowly started adding to the group because at this point in time, Employees at Sun were still hesitant on even joining Facebook. Do I even join? Am I going to get fired? Is this something that I can even utilize for business? I don't want to get in trouble. So it was kind of, you know, pushing those fears and saying, you know, it's okay. And even for a little bit. Um, so, and I'll talk a little bit about training and empowerment because I feel like it's super, super important in this day and age for social media. Um, actually, I have it on the site. So Sun Social U is a program that I actually launched a year and a half later. Um, it was really geared for the global communications group. I, I wanted them to bring in their laptops, there's 40 of them, and, and really kind of do a hands-on hands training. The word spread and people within marketing, accounting, legal, developers started sending me messages going, I hear there's some kind of training going on, is there any way I can get on, on, in on this? I'm like, okay, well there's enough of a need for this, why not? So we created an actual formal program called Sun Social U, or Sun Social University. And every month there was a, an agenda. It was a four hour, three to four hour workshop. Um, we did a state of the union for Sun and social media, what we were up to. We did uh, stats and facts of what's going on with this particular platform. We kicked it off with Twitter. We did a hands-on training where everyone, there was about 200 people in the room, which completely maxed out our biggest conference room with laptops in hand, that actually, got a training from minute, you know, from the minute that they opened their laptop. So they became mini experts within the first hour of their training. And then after that, we brought in a visiting expert, so Shell Israel, who's the author of Twitterville um, and the co-author of Naked Conversations with Robert Scoble, came in. And we did an hour-long interview, which I actually integrated with a radio show that I host on Blog Talk Radio called Socially Speaking, so that was available to the public. And then after that, we had someone who actually presented on the metrics and how does Twitter make sense for Sun? What are our numbers? What are, how did we increase our campaigns? How did we gain this much traffic? How did we get this kind of business from something as simple as Twitter? 